Shalom, shalom, to those far and near. Shalom, shalom, to all who hear. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, everyone. I'm Bonnie Moore. I'm president of Maranatha Ministries. And Maranatha means, come Lord Jesus. And God has good news for you. And we're going to share it today right from his wonderful, omnipotent word. Everyone say, wow, because his words are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So we're going to get right into today's life lesson. And we're going to begin with a song because he dwells on our praises when we're thinking of him, when we're lifting our hearts to him. The Lord is clothed in majesty. He wraps himself in light. The clouds, they are his chariot. On the wings of the wind, he takes flight. O oh Lord, my Lord, you are great indeed. O oh Lord, my Lord, you supply every need. How precious are your plans for us. How wonderful your ways. For in your loving providence, you have counted all of our days. O oh Lord, my Lord, you are great indeed. O oh Lord, my Lord, you supply every need. We're starting a new series today. It's called Forever. Just say it. Forever. Precious plans that outnumber sand. Well, let's look at the sand. Can you count it? Well, the sand is a finite number. There's grains of sand. You see the child here running it, the sand through his hands. It's beyond us to count, but it's finite. But God's plans for you are forever. They're infinite. They outnumber the sand. And we read that in Psalm 139. So let's read our key scripture here. How precious also. Well, you read the whole psalm, you'll find out why it says also. It's talking about how wonderfully made we are by the Lord and how he planned us from eternity to eternity. How precious also are your thoughts towards me, O oh God. Oh, he has thoughts for you. How vast is the sum of them. If I should count them. Now, can you count the grains of the sand? Well, they're finite, but we can't count them. It's too many. They would outnumber the sand. When I awake, I'm still with you. He calls death just falling to sleep. And when you awake, you have fullness of joy in his presence. The delights at his right hand, how long? Forever. And here's this is Psalm 139, 17 through 18. And I was just quoting Psalm 16, line 11. Forever. He'll show us the path to life, fullness of joy in his presence. 
forever. Now let's uh, read from Isaiah 41. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Lord, in capitals like that, is Yahweh. Some people say Yahweh, but I like Yahweh. And I'll show you why. And it means I am, I was, and I am to come. So I am the Lord your God, calling forth the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, am the first, and with the last, I am he. Isn't that wonderful? He was the first before anything was made that was made that we know now in time. But it, we're always with him after we come into being. Because once we come into being, it's forever. And But he planned us from everlasting to everlasting. He always knew about you. But there's a point in time when you took flesh and your mother's womb and were born. Now let's think about that. God's plans, his purpose, his will for you is forever. Everybody say, I am forever. It's not limited to this life in the world as you know it now. We're limited by time and space, you know, and uh, our physical bodies. But that's why he tells you that his plans for you outnumber the sand. The sand, though impossible for us to count, is finite. But God's plans for you are not. He knows them well, but you cannot count them as coming to an end because they never have an end. And what does he say? For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for shalom. Now we translate that as peace, sometimes prosperity, sometimes wholeness. The chastisement was on Jesus that makes us whole. That's the world shalom. And when Jesus rose from the dead, what did he say to his disciples in the upper room? Shalom. Well, sometimes we translate that as all is well, like with the Thunamite woman. But shalom actually is a Hebrew word. And you notice that I greeted you. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, if I want to put it this way, is the whole pie of life. It's nothing missing, nothing broken, no one alone. It's got every pea, a piece of the pie in place, every piece of the pie in place. In other words, Health is there, healing is there, forgiveness is there. If you want to see shalom in all its fullness, then go to Psalm 103, and you will find the description of shalom. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my ills. He pulls me out of the pit. He redeems me out of the pit. That could be depression, emotional trauma, illness, uh, you know, anything that puts you in a pit financial difficulties, uh, anything, abuse, oppression, depression. So he pulls us out of the pit. He redeems us by the blood of Jesus. And he surrounds us with love and compassion, fills our days with good things, and renews our youth like the eagles so that we're strong and capable, clear minds, till when we go home with him in heaven, the kingdom. We're always at home with God. You know, dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, God sees all eternity. He sees now and forever. You cannot count it. It never ends. But it's like the number line. It's all measured and all planned, but it never ends. Past, present, and future is all there. He puts in epics and seasons and uh, ages. The age of grace is what we're in now. But do you remember the number line from mathematics? Um, there's a negative direction and a positive direction. Here's the integers. And they never end. That's what that arrow means. And that's what that symbol we had at the beginning, the infinity. It's forever. So both go forever. The Lord is the one, like we said, who is, who was, and is to come, Yahava. That's his memorial name that he gave to Moses for all generations. Uh, he wanted to know his covenant name, Moses. So it's three tenses of the verb to be combined in just four letters as written in the language of Hebrew. Compasses all time, space, and matter. I am, I was, I'm to come. Yeah, it's like the four chemicals. His name has four letters. Yod, he, vav, he. That make up DNA, making each of you unique and planned from the past to the present to the future. So in God's name, unique, but creating a new of the old that's forever renewing. 
He's always doing something new, but he put everything in the earth for life and godliness when he made it. So from just one strand of your DNA, God can raise up your glorified heavenly body on the last day by the Holy Spirit. And he calls each of you by your own name that he's given you before he formed you in your mother's womb. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. But to each of you, he has also given his name as family. He is your father forever. And it says that in Isaiah 9, a child is born to us, son is given us, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. Ephesians 3, 14 through 15. God pronounces his memorial name, Yahav. Now here's the four sacred letters, the Yod, meaning a hand. That's the name for hand in Hebrew, Yad. The He, which is the fifth, well, Yod is the tenth letter. Ten fingers, that's your, it's the symbol as hand. Okay, He, the pictograph is a man standing in amazement, getting a revelation from heaven, the open window here. It's grace, is number five. And the Vav, well, you know what the pictogram is for that, a nail, a big peg, and a He, another grace. So you have a hand, grace, a nail, grace. So you see the nailed hand gave us grace upon grace. So already we see the things to come in the name. And Yod, Ahava, Ahava is love, land for love in Hebrew. So he's a hand of love. And all the works of his hands were all the work of his hands, and he is love. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. Hand of love. Isaiah 64, 8. He's made you awesomely and wonderfully. Now, Adam, by giving over his life, his life to a lie and rejecting God's word of truth, went from an incorruptible seed to a perishable seed. That what brings about defects in the body and so on. But we need to get back by being born again from above by the imperishable word of God when we submit to it rather than the lies of the world to again be fearfully, wonderfully, just the way. But look how fearfully, wonderfully made you are. All your organs right now in your body are working and you don't even have to think about it. Your stomach is working, your intestines are working, your heart is beating, you are breathing. It's a whole business, a city, a universe going on inside of you. And they're communicating with each other, the cells, and there's the uh, nerve impulses. So you see that God really made us wonderfully, gloriously. And in Hebrew, the word is uh, yara, which means wonderful, glorious, things that cause astonishment and awe are in us. And wonderfully, um, pala, which means to be separated as unique, marvelous, surpassing, or extraordinary. And it's from the noun pale, which means a wonder or wonderful. That's a you know, wonderful counselor play. So before you came to be, you know, you're awesome and amazing, and you need to know that. So don't treat your body as cheap and don't feed it things that are going to kill it, make it have cirrhosis of the liver, make it flabby and unhealthy. Uh, eat healthy, exercise, value the body that God gave you, but above all, get the word of God in you because it's life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. And it will keep you strong, but you need to watch what you're putting in, both eating and hearing, because hearing uh, causes you to get faith in what you hear. So be careful about what you're listening to. Pay attention. Pay attention to your life. Now, before you came to be, he is and was, but he's always knew you and planned you in his heart, even before you came into, you know, existence materially. Uh, at the time and place, he spoke you into being, and the Holy Spirit hovering there gave life to your mortal body. That's the way he creates. God, if you look at Genesis, he says the word, the Holy Spirit is hovering, and the Holy Spirit brings that word, and Jesus is the word made flesh into manifestation. And what did he tell Jeremiah that he tells all of us? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. He set you apart for a unique assignment. You're unique 
you don't evolve and you don't reincarnate. <laughs> you have one life to live, but it is forever. And that is why you don't need to come back and do it again. You're forever. You're forever. Now, and you're unique. You stay the unique you. You don't float off and become something else. You always are you. Once you're born, you're you. And so we're comfortable with being ourselves. That is who Lord made us to be. And you know why you're here? It's because he willed you to be here. That's the reason. You are here because he wants you here. And you're here because he loves you. And if anybody says, what's your, why are you here? Because God's will. I'm here. I'm doing his will by being here. Because he loved me so much. He planned me forever. And the same is true for everyone. And we're all very unique. No one has your same DNA, your same iris color in your eye. They identify you by that now. Airports. Same fingerprints. No one has the same voice print ever. It's very unique. And same with your spirit and your soul. Have you ever met two people that have exactly the same personality? I doubt it. And in as much as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes the judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. Hebrews 9, 27 to 28. He is returning in all his glory, but he already took all our sins away. So he's coming to redeem our bodies. In other words, this fleshly body that ends in the grave uh, will be caught up and replaced uh, with a heavenly body, heavenly substance that is immortal, is forever, and it's not subject to decay or sickness or any such because it will be of the word and not of perishable seed. So for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we all should always be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. The, the moment you die, even now, you're absent from the body. If you've believed in the Lord, you're present with the Lord and you look like you look, but perfect. But that resurrected body that will clothe your spirit, your soul, will be when he returns. And where you are and where he is, is always now. If you look on the number line, it would be now. Where you put your pointer is now. And now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence in Greek, the title deed, to things not seen. So if you've got a title deed to a piece of property that says you're the owner, even if you hadn't seen the property yet, you just got it as a gift, you know that's yours. That tax map key or wherever it is located, it is yours. Now, eternity, and that's the same with healing. It is yours. You don't have to beg for healing. If you're in Christ, when Jesus died, that's a benefit you got. And it's already, uh, you have every spiritual blessing in the heaven. You just need to come boldly to the throne of grace and receive that mercy. You take that healing. It's yours. So how do you get it? You speak it. That's how you withdraw from your heavenly account. You speak it. You believe in your heart and speak with your mouth. It's the same way you got saved, same way you, uh, as you receive Christ. So walk in him. You have healing. Don't be begging the Lord to heal me. You have it. So what do you say? Thank you, Lord. By his stripes, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, whatever the sickness is, name it. Be gone and get out of me because I've been healed by the stripes of Jesus. You do not belong in me. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit out and then you cast your care on the lord and with complete cost. so you speak to the mountain and then you cast your care on the lord and you pray for a complete restoration and good health from then on you know and then you believe when you ask that you receive in the spirit and you say thank you and you speak it and till it manifests in the physical and that illness is gone you have to understand first you must receive it in your spirit and then it will work out, work out your salvation with fear and trembling for God is at work in you to will and to do. How do you get it out? You speak it. You believe it by faith. You join with it. You connect with it. Now, eternity, though it never ends, is organized. It's ordered and organized. You have place, time, purpose. But once you enter uh, time, which we do when we're born, just know you're forever. It all begins on here on earth, but it doesn't end. This life in the world as it is now, it, now get this in your mind, is a test of where you will be forever. This life's very short. Eternity's very long. 
Why don't you spend the day with me singing a happy song? Shout with joy to your maker. Come rejoice with your king. For I am God, your father, and I can do anything. So we keep that in mind. And your life matters to God, but especially matters to you. So you're alive to God forever. And your purpose, your place, you yourself are forever, but you're never alone. The Lord is right there with you. That's one of his titles, Yahweh Shama. The Lord is there, always and forever. So some people pray, Lord, be with me. And it's like, if you've taken Jesus as your Lord, the Holy Spirit is in you. It's like, I have to be I'm in you. You know, and through that Holy Spirit connection, you can access like, uh, you know, on Zoom, you can access a meeting. Uh, physically, you're not really there, but you are there. And that's like heaven is not really the whole heaven contained in you or the Holy Spirit, but he's there. And he's connecting you to the vast glorious kingdom of heaven, heaven, which God has given you already. See, do not fear for I am with you. Do not actually look about for uh, about you. And like, hey, where's God's? For I am your God. I'll strengthen you. Surely I'll help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah 41 10. Everybody just put your hand in God's hand right now. Now, God is your life. You're here. You're alive because He planned you and He wanted you. You're here by His will. In existing, you're already doing His will. But that's not enough to be with Him forever. For His plans for your life, they outnumber the sand but they're all written in his book before one day of them existed. That's what it says in Psalm 139. God has books, scrolls. And one of them is yours, the story of your life. You can live it or not. It's not predestination. You choose whether you're going to follow that plan or you're not. But I'm going to tell you something. It's a big mistake not to follow it. Because that's where your happiness, your peace, and your provision lies. So if you want to rebel and go off on your own, look around you. You see a lot of people who have done that. They're very sick, sable, bitter, have been drug addicted, have ruined their lives, alcohol, overeating. They've ruined their lives. Did God tell them to do that? No. They did that on their own because they rebelled against the plan. It's not wise because God loves you. He created you with the you you are to be the you he planned you to be. And that's where you'll be happy. And he's empowered you to live that life. Now, apart from what he planned for you, you're living an idle life. And you're doing nothing but cluttering up the ground, I'm sorry to say. And abusing people, hurting people, going through life being hurt and hurting others. This is serious for your forever your forever is depending on it. And it all has to do with keeping God's word and walking in the truth and not in the lives of sin. For sin does not produce good fruit, but produces death. You have to understand this. Lies are perishable. Truth is not. I'm a lawyer by profession. I know at court, if you can show the judge the truth, you will win over any lie. Truth prevails. Now, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Matthew 7, 19. You don't want to live a lie. God is good. God is with you. But there's certain protocol you have to follow. Or you just, it, that's the same in anything, even in court or whatever. If somebody makes a complaint against you, you have to answer it. Or it's a default judgment. When Satan tells lies against you or, or talks to you, things that are contrary to the word, you say, oh, no, you don't. You don't, I know the truth, and the truth has set me free from that, right? So he told them a parable, a man had a fig tree, which had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and didn't find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, behold, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? And he answered and said to him, let alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and put fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, cut it down. You know, I read about Herod in the Bible. God gave him chance after chance. He sent him Jesus. He sent him John. 
you know, what better people could talk to. He rejected it all and continued on to abuse and hurt people, kill them, murder them. And finally it was over for him. So what happens if anyone does not abide in me is thrown away as a branch and dries up. I gather them and cast them into the fire and they're burned. John 15, 6. Now I had to end the lesson here, but we will continue next time. I'll mark where we are. Because it's this is very important. But I want you to know this. That's life, his plans. He is love. And that's how he wants you to live too. And that is the most wonderful way to live. And so we will get into that, more of that during this series of how to have a beautiful forever and a beautiful now. Oh, it is so beautiful to walk with God, to hear his voice, to converse with him, to get answers, to run to him the minute there's problems in your life and be healed. We don't need to be confused and unhappy. God has all the answers. He's your father. He wants you here. He wants you with him forever. He has plans for you to have wonderful, beautiful, extraordinary adventures forever. Don't you want them? And the kingdom of heaven, you have a place there. That's beyond all we can ask or imagine. This life's short. So let's take Jesus, our Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He died for me. I believe we raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in that beautiful life you prepared for me in advance that I might enjoy it. Amen. If you said that from your heart, God will lead you and God will guide you and he'll give you a beautiful life, the most beautiful life ever lived. And it will be forever. So don't you want it? Of course you do. If you are wise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, give you his grace. The Lord smile upon you and give you shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, everyone. And I'll see you next life lesson. This is really only the beginning. I make all things new. Resurrection joy is there for all of you. I have promised you eternal life, and it is there for you in Jesus. You have only to receive him. Mm -hmm.